Hi everyone, and welcome to Gatsby Conf. We're so excited that you're here. I'm Lori Barth, and I'm a staff software engineer here at Gatsby. You may have noticed in the past couple of talks rumblings about a new image solution in Gatsby. Well, I'm here to tell you the rumors are true. My team and I have been working on this for the last couple of months, and we're so excited to share it with you. Best practices around images have been changing over the past couple of years, whether that's support for new image formats or improved browser support for APIs. We wanted to make sure that Gatsby users are able to take advantage of all of these improvements. We also wanted to address developer experience and make working with images in Gatsby as frictionless as possible. We can't wait to show it to you. So without further ado, let's get started. I want to include this beautiful image of colorful umbrellas in the sky in my site. I'm going to show you how to do that performantly with just a couple lines of code. I want to start by including two different plugins, Gatsby plugin sharp, which will process all of my images at build time and Gatsby plugin image, which contains the components for the new image solution. In my page, I want to import static image, which is a component that comes from Gatsby plugin image. In order to use static image, I need to include two pieces of information. The first is an alt, so it's accessible by default. We'll use colorful umbrellas in the sky. The second is a source, and the source should be a string. In this case, my image URL. If I save this off and navigate to my site, my image is already there, ready to go. And what's better is it's performant by default. We can see this by inspecting our image. You'll notice that instead of a single source image, there are multiple. Each of these images are different sizes, which allows smaller devices like a mobile phone to download a smaller image and render it. This improves performance scores because it's not downloading a much larger file than it actually needs. You'll also notice that there are two different sets of images. The first is JPEG, which is what our original image was, and the second is WebP. These files are smaller, and therefore it's faster to download them. Not every browser supports WebP, so we include the JPEG images as fallback. We can go a step further and use the formats part of the API. We can pass an array. By default, it's auto and WebP. We can also pass AVIF, which is the newest image format. AVIF images are the smallest file size and also provide a slightly richer color. AVIF images are created for all of the different sizes we want to support. And again, we have the WebP and the JPEG fallback for browsers that don't support it. Another thing our component provides is a placeholder. This is a great benefit for performance because it means that we don't have to relay out the page once our image is downloaded. It's already accounted for. By default, we provide something called dominant color, which you may have seen flash on the screen just there. It's calculated for each image individually. In this image's case, it matches that nice blue background color. Alternatively, you can choose your own placeholder type. We have blur, which is what the old Gatsby image uses, and it has that nice blurred image. Alternatively, you can use traced SVG, which is great for images with really prominent shapes. You can also pass none. If you pass none, you'll still have the sizer that accounts for that placeholder layout issue, but it's white. If you want to provide a color, you can set background color. We'll make it blue. If we refresh our page, we'll see that very bright blue show up before our image loads. Next, I want to talk about layouts and how we generate all the sizes at build time so that they're available to the browser as a user resizes their screen. Let's remove all of this and talk about our new default layout type, constrained. We expect that constrained is going to be what most people want to use. It generates responsive images that get larger and smaller as a window resizes. 
However, as the name suggests, there's an upper limit. These images are constrained by the original source of the file. That means that you won't get degraded image quality or pixelated images as they stretch beyond their original processing size. This is a slightly larger image than we might expect, so let's pass a width. We can see that the image gets larger but only as large as 900, and yet it still gets smaller. You can set an upper, upper limit on constrained images using width, height, or both. However, you might find yourself saying that there are images that you expect to be the full width of the screen, and you want them to get as large as they need to, something like a hero image. That's now available using full width. The image will get larger, as large as it needs to, and smaller. The final layout type is called fixed. As the screen gets larger, it stays the same, and as the screen gets smaller, it gets cropped out of view. The last thing I want to talk about with sizes is a new piece of the API called aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is wonderful because it allows you to manipulate the cropping of images at the time that they're generated. This is important for performance because it makes sure that you're not downloading a larger image than is actually viewable on screen. We'll go with movie style, 21 over 9. Let's give it a slightly smaller width so we can see this. As you can see, this crops the image using an aspect ratio. This is great when you have a variety of images that aren't all the same size, but you want them to always appear as the same size container. If you're listing a bunch of products, for example. Another thing I want to talk about is images that are above the fold. These are images that will appear as soon as a user goes to your website and you want them to load immediately to make that great first impression. Part of the reason these components are so performant is that they're taking advantage of hydration, server-side rendering, and lazy loading, which means that the images don't download until they're viewable on screen or the browser is available to receive them. For images that you know you want to appear right away, we have loading equals eager. These images will show up even before React has run on your site giving your users the fastest experience possible. The last thing I want to talk about is some of the fun options available via this API. Using transform options, you can do things like grayscale equals true. This will process your image in grayscale. And this is actually the processed image. There's no CSS filters or other things that have to run in the browser. Another option is rotate 90, which will change the way that your image is rotated. These are just a couple of the options available, but it's nice to see how custom you can get with the way you process your images so that they have the exact look and feel that you expect as soon as they're downloaded into the browser. Now, we've walked through the API and all of the different things you can do with images, but let's see just what we mean by performant and what that gets us. We're going to remove all of this and work with our default. And we're going to create a new page called image.js. We're going to take the same component that we have before, the only difference is that we're going to use an IMG tag as if it were an HTML element. Now let's run Lighthouse on both of these and see what happens. If we look at the images side by side, we see that the performance scores are drastically different, more than 10 points. And the only difference between what we're doing is using the image element tag versus the static image component. All of these things that you get for free with the new Gatsby plugin image. It's worth noting that static image doesn't have to take a URL as its source. It can also take a relative path. 
And if you're using dynamic images and processing data that might change, like Markdown Front Matter, for example, you'll use the Gatsby image component, which also has a new simplified API that mirrors the one available in static image. All of these things are available for your use now. Thanks so much for joining us and I'll be around for questions.